Andrew Fitzpatrick. And I'm Teo Torres. So we got quite the seven day forecast. A little of this, a little of that. Yeah, totally. It's all good though. It's interesting. Yeah, it yeah. is definitely. Let's go to meteorologist Tamara Berg to find out a little bit more. Yeah, and right now we're still about 31 minutes away officially from sunrise to kick off your Monday. And look at these temperatures in the 50s. It's 57 right now in Yuba City. 55 as we're starting to get some color on the horizon across Sacramento. Sitting at 61 in Fairfield, 62 this morning in Stockton and dipping down to the upper 50s for Modesto. We're hanging out in the mid to upper 60s right now in Auburn and Placerville as we await sunrise for this Monday morning. Something to point out here and something that's kind of on the struggle bus for the morning start. It's the marine there. You can slowly see it kind of oozing down from north to southbound. And as that marine there is pretty lackluster, so is that delta breeze. And that's going to lead us into another very warm forecast today. So plan for highs, maybe a degree or two warmer than yesterday. Take advantage of the morning when it's pleasant. Nine o'clock temperatures in the upper 60s near Valley Planner. We'll move on up to the mid 80s by lunchtime and daytime highs peaking in the upper 90s. Now for the foothills, this will be plenty of sunshine and the morning starts out again in those mid to upper 60s. Areas like Auburn, Placerville will eventually hit the upper 80s by lunchtime with daytime highs in the low 90s. So we are looking at a hot kickoff to the work week. I'll take you through some cooling ahead those we prepare for the rest of the week coming up in your full forecast. Right now, Brian's preparing you for what's on those roadways. Yeah, and uh, there was a deadly crash overnight. This is at uh, Willard Parkway and Bilby Road and uh, crews out there right now this morning in Elk Grove. They're investigating this deadly crash. It happened after one this morning on Willard Parkway at Bilby Road. That's in the Franklin area. Here's a look at the damage. Just one vehicle involved and you can see just how how much damage was caused there. It hit a tree in uh, near Willby ends at uh, Willard. The driver died at the scene. Investigators were on scene all morning trying to figure out what caused that crash. Now here uh, with more current news in traffic this morning, we can see here along uh, Interstate 80 as you're heading out onto the causeway. Traffic looking good in that direction. No issues as you can see uh, the taillights heading out that way. But as you uh, get out just past uh, Vacaville heading towards Fairfield before Manuel Campbell's Parkway, we had a crash there and it's slowly starting to clear out. We're still seeing a little bit of slowing there as you're departing Vacaville towards Fairfield, but that should be cleared out by the time you get there if you're leaving Sacramento right now, especially. Here's a look at Highway 50. 50 westbound. You can see the first of three traffic diversions there, and so far things are moving along just fine through the Fix 50 project. No delays on Interstate 80 westbound and northbound 5 and 99 looking good coming up from Elk Grove. We're not seeing any problems there. Through Stockton, still incident free. Highway 4 after an earlier crash, all clear and running at the limit. Northbound 99, a 13 minute ride between Modesto and Antica. 34 minutes on 205 from I 5 to 580, and then westbound 580, a 28 minute ride. Here in Sacramento, as you saw, on the map. Everything's running at the speed limit. Nine minutes from Roseville to the split. I-5, 11 minutes out of Elk Grove. Same for 99 and again 50. Just a little slow there. A 10 minute ride. Now if you've driven over Interstate 80 in the Sierra, you know that uh, it can be a rough ride. Some of the ruts up there really start yanking on the roads. There is an emergency project that is uh, beginning today at 10 a.m. Uh, from Boca through Donner Pass. It's a 10 to 15 minute delay that they're expecting there and it's uh, up to two hour delays over the weekend. In case you're at threes, Mike Desell is live in the Sierra with more on the work that's planned, Mike. Yeah, and a lot of information you just gave away, Brian. I'm going to add even more information to that as we are live in Colfax. This is one end of this emergency repair project. The other end, as you mentioned, 69 miles away. And in between, a whole lot of damaged roadway. In fact, Brian, as you just said, if you've driven I-80 into the Sierra, you've likely seen or felt the damaged roadway. In fact, the ruts, the cracks, even the potholes in the slow lane are significant and hard not to notice. These are some pictures Caltrain took to demonstrate the damage, but Caltrans says the extent of the damage is due to this winter's snowy and rainy weather. The extent of the damage, in their words, is, quote, unprecedented and is leading to $84 million in emergency repairs on this entire stretch through the Sierra. The first section of work begins later this morning and is focused on that stretch of I-80 from Donner Summit to the Nevada State Line. Again, that's something you just uh, covered, Brian, but as we come back out here live, Caltrans is telling drivers again, as you mentioned, Brian, delays of 10 to 15 minutes today. However, if you haven't been paying attention up until now, stop what you're doing and listen to this, because if you have any plans to drive into the Sierra after the Labor Day weekend, that 
is when they were going to begin all of the repairs from Colfax all the way to the Nevada state line. And they say once all of this work begins in earnest and in tandem, that the delays for drivers could stretch up to two hours. Live in Colfax, Long Interstate 80, Mike Tassel, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, and that's why it's worth repeating. Yeah. And we will repeat it again. Yes, we will. That's this the is last a big one. Heard, yeah. So traffic is likely going to be heavy on Highway 50 around Sacramento State this morning because classes for the fall semester are starting. It's always kind of a traffic. Oh, yeah, no, it is. That's not the only reason 50 is a mess right no, now. No, that's not it. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Hey, Melanie Wingo <laughs> joins us live with a look at what to expect. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning. Well, it is a new school year, and as we've been reporting, there is a new president for the university. And last week, the university's new president outlined some priorities that he would like to see fulfilled here on campus in the coming years. Now, the new president of Sac State University, Luke Wood, addressed the campus community last week. He says he intends to prioritize improving campus security, including forming a task force on safety and also prioritizing some infrastructure improvements, including installing more digital monitors in key locations on campus and increasing the number of community service officers, as well as having more mental health counselors at the university. Instruction for the fall term officially getting underway today. And last week we were on campus for move in day. That's when 1300 first year students got their residence hall assignments and moved into the dorms. Another several hundred students returned to campus and got their on campus housing assignments. Also in advance of the first day instruction, as I mentioned, the new president Luke Wood delivered his first fall address as well as welcoming students on campus at a convocation ceremony. And now with all of these welcome events underway and having happened, it's time for the students to hit the books. So that's all happening today as the first day of class gets underway. We are outside the student union this morning and it's quiet now. We haven't seen too many people coming and going except for the folks who work on campus getting the campus ready for the day. Maybe a student or two. We noticed a few backpacks pack backpacks, but we'll be out here and we're hoping to speak with some students as they head to class for the first time for the the year. Reporting live on the Sac State campus, Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News. All right, thanks, Melanie. Today, Sacramento fire investigators are going to continue investigating the cause of a fire that destroyed a North Sacramento furniture store. Flames came out of the Casa Bella Galleria early yesterday. That building's on Del Paso Boulevard, and it had so much damage that the city crews ended up demolishing most of it. Shane and Rhoda Curry have owned that business for 20 years. They say they're devastated, but they will rebuild. Other local businesses did gather last night to lend some support, and business leaders say they'll help the owners fast track the rebuilding. Our life. We're pretty depressed this morning, but we're getting an outpouring of support. Kind of like, okay, all right, we're not in the wrong place. We're in the right place. We want to rebuild, I and mean, we're going to get over this. I mean, we love the community, and we want to stay here, so we do want to rebuild. The owners do hope that they can be back open by the end of the year. What well, happening today? The man convicted of killing a Stockton firefighter is expected to ask for a new trial. Robert Somerville shot and killed Captain Vidal Max Fortuna last year. Fortuna was responding to a dumpster fire outside of Somerville's business when that shooting happened. A Somerville sentencing in July was postponed after his defense attorney told the judge he planned to ask for a new trial. A DA's office previously told KCRA 3 that motion should be filed today. A judge will then set another court date to argue that motion. Also due in court this morning is the El Dorado County Special Education bus driver seen here. His name is Tariq Mansara. He's accused of sexually assaulting a passenger who is not capable of giving <coughs> consent. A preliminary hearing in the case is scheduled for 8.30 at the courthouse in Placerville. Well, as the U.S. marks 60 years since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech during the march on Washington, leaders are facing another instance of race-based violence. A white gunman in Florida killed three black people over the weekend. KCR3's Amy Liu has more on the reaction to this latest attack. Well, civil rights leaders say the work is far from over and achieving King's dream of racial justice and equality is not yet fulfilled. Now is the time 
We must preserve, protect, and expand democracy. Civil rights leaders commemorating the anniversary of the March on Washington are also confronting another instance of racism and gun violence in the U.S. A white man in Jacksonville, Florida, killing three black people in what police say was a racially motivated attack. President Biden commenting briefly in person says the White House is offering full support to the city, writing in a statement, we must say clearly and forcefully that white supremacy has no place in America. And from Vice President Harris, quote, every person in every community in America should have the freedom to live safe from gun violence, and Congress must help secure that freedom. A push towards progress 60 years later. We must end gun violence. And then maybe one day we will be a great nation. And the Justice Department is investigating the Jacksonville shooting as a hate crime. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, KCRA 3 News. In honor of the 60th anniversary of King's speech today, President Biden and Vice President Harris will meet with King's relatives and the organizer of the March on Washington.